What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. Today we're going to talk about the five most common mistakes that I see people make with their Bermuda lawns and the steps that you can take to avoid them. Before we jump into the video, make sure you check the description box below and go to the link for the Lawn Insider merch store. Until 4th of July, you can get 20% off on any Lawn Insider merchandise using the promo code SUMMER, all caps. Okay, so the one mistake that I see most often in Bermuda lawns is that people cut them too high. So a lot of places on YouTube and the internet will tell you that you just need to put your rotary mower on the highest setting for the height of cut and just maintain it there throughout the year. And that is good information on most grass types, but on Bermuda, it's smart to cut pretty much as low as your mower will go. I maintain my Bermuda grass at a half inch height of cut and that short height of cut really promotes the lateral growth pattern that Bermuda grass likes. Bermuda grass really grows two ways. It's got stolons over the surface called runners and then rhizomes underneath the surface. And they both really want to run laterally. And when we start cutting our lawns short, it's telling the plant don't waste any energy growing the plant tall or shooting it vertically really shoot out more runners. And those runners are really gonna make for a tighter turf, and that's gonna help you with a healthier lawn, but it's also gonna help your grass start out competing those weeds, and it's going to help you have few weed problems throughout the year. If I was to put a number on what I would say your max height of cut should be with your Bermuda lawn, I would say probably two inches, okay? Once you get over two inches with Bermuda, it starts getting more leggy, and not as thick, and then it's just going to invite more weed pressure in your lawn. The second most common mistake I see in Bermuda lawns is that people just don't mow frequently enough. So a lot of people just don't like mowing and they like to put it off and they might mow like every other week. And Bermuda grass is a warm season grass, so especially during the summer, it's going to grow too quickly to only mow once every two weeks. And by the time you do mow, you'll end up scalping it, it'll turn brown, and then a lot of people will think that they killed their yard or that they're not watering enough. But in reality, they're just not mowing often enough. So with Bermuda grass, you need to be mowing at least once a week, and I really recommend trying to mow at least twice a week. Now, if you have a real mower like I do, and you want to maintain at a really short height of cut, plan on mowing even more frequently than that. The number three most common mistake I see in Bermuda lawns is people watering too frequently. Now remember, Bermuda grass only needs about one inch of water per week, whether that's coming from rain or your irrigation system. Now I actually haven't had to run my irrigation system in like a month, which has been awesome. We've been getting so much rain. But when I do actually run my sprinklers, I put down the entire inch in one day of the week over the course of two waterings. Now, when you are using your irrigation system, you're going to want to be really precise so you're not overwatering or underwatering. Um, nobody really wants to waste money. And the way you can be really precise with how much water you're putting down is one of these things. And this is an irrigation gauge, and it just allows you to really dial in how much water you're putting in on your lawn, and that way you're not wasting money. So the way these measuring cups work, and just so you all know, you can do the same thing with a tuna can, because tuna cans are about an inch deep. But you put them out in your lawn, and these actually come in a pack of 10, and I got mine off of Amazon. I'll put the link below. But you put them out in the lawn, and you try to stake them as evenly as possible throughout whatever section that you are watering. And then you run your sprinkler system for 15 minutes, and you see how far up the water actually goes and then from that information you can figure out how long you'll need to run those sprinkler systems to put down one inch of water in your lawn. And the reason you want to water deep but infrequently as opposed to shallow but frequently is because when you water shallow and frequently your root system doesn't have to work hard to get that water and they just stay close to the surface and they don't work their way deep into the ground. But when you're only watering once a week and that water is getting deep, the root system has to work its way deep into the ground and a deeper root system is going to result in a healthier lawn. The number four most common mistake that I see in Bermuda lawns is that people will have a thin spot somewhere in their yard and they'll run to the Home Depot or the Lowe's, buy a bag of Bermuda grass seed, and then come home and try to overseed with that Bermuda grass seed. 
And the reason I warn against this is that most people have hybrid Bermuda lawns and the seed that you get from the store is common Bermuda because you can't get hybrid Bermuda seed. And then when you actually do overseed, if the seed germinates, it won't match your existing grass and you'll start getting blotchy turf. Bermuda grass is a vigorous spreader and 99% of the time it's going to fill in those weak spots in your yard on its own as long as you're giving it the right conditions to grow. So it isn't impossible to overseed your existing sod, it's just that whatever seed you pick isn't going to match your existing grass and then you might get that blotchy look in your yard. So it's better just to try to treat your existing turf right because Bermuda grass wants to spread and if we can give it the right conditions to grow, it's going to spread, it's going to get thicker and it's going to fill in those weak spots in your yard. The fifth most common mistake I see with Bermuda lawns is that people will either lay Bermuda sod, plant Bermuda seed, or they'll put trees in already established Bermuda lawns and Bermuda grass actually grows really poorly in shade and a lot of times if you have a really weak spot in your yard it's probably due to the fact that that area is getting too much shade and not enough sunlight. So like in my lawn, for instance, earlier in the season when I scalped, the areas that came back the slowest were the spots that had the most shade. So like this side of the yard and then in the backyard, um, right up next to the house, those areas get more shade than the rest of the yard just because where the sun's hitting and the house is casting a shadow in those areas a lot of the day, um, those areas came back slower. So Bermuda grass in general pretty much hates the shade. So whenever you have a weak spot and you notice that that spot gets a lot of shade, if you can, go ahead and trim that tree down as much as possible, get as much sunlight in there as possible, and that will spur the growth of that Bermuda grass. Now with all that being said, you'll probably notice that I do have two trees in my front yard, and that is not by choice. It's a requirement of the HOA in this neighborhood. If it was up to me, those trees would be gone and I would have 100% grass up here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here, guys. Those are the five most common mistakes that I see in Bermuda lawns and the steps that you can take to avoid them. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. If you're liking the content so far and you want to see more of it, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave those in the comments section below. I'll see you all again next week. Lawn Insider, out.